Well hello there everybody, my name's Mikey and welcome back to my room, it's time for another tutorial! So yes, today I'm going to be running you guys through my top 10 tips for colouring digital artwork in Photoshop, although to be fair this will apply for most other drawing applications as well. So thanks a lot as ever for getting in the comments section and letting me know what you guys want to see next. Now in order to stop this video from being about 6 hours long of real time colouring, which is probably better suited for a live stream instead, I thought I'd take all of the things I like to do with my own coloured artwork and really boil it down into 10 key bullet points that really make it pop. So just a few things worth a really quick mention first. I will of course be announcing the winner to the UG Graphics Drawing Tablet at the end of this video so stay tuned and of course a great big thank you to everybody who followed on Instagram and Twitter in order to get involved. And not only that I also wanted to announce that this November I'm doing another tablet giveaway for an even more powerful model. At the end of the month I will be giving away to one of you lovely people on Patreon the Ace Pen AP2150 graphics drawing tablet, another one that I've had the pleasure of doing an unboxing and review of before. Now again I'll get into the details at the end of the video and probably talk about it more in something separate, but long story short, I'm going to be sending off this tablet to one of my lovely patrons on Patreon at the very start of December. I'll basically be picking one of the winners from all of the old schoolers and anybody else who joins up over this month because basically it's a nice way to say thank you for you guys for all of the support because basically you're awesome and it's the main thing that keeps this channel going. Links of course in the description below. And then the very last thing to mention is that those lovely people over at Gearbest.com have kicked off their November 11 11 promotions. Now this is not a sponsored video, they're not paying me to mention this but they did ask me if I wanted to mention it to you lot because basically they're running all of these different discounts at different set times throughout this month and it's a great opportunity if you want to get some electronics in on the cheap especially when it comes to your digital artwork. Now of course links again in the description below but they are heavily discounting a lot of stuff and I thought I'd mention it because these guys often send me lovely things to review which I get to then pass on to you lot and they're always pretty cool about things. So boom without further ado these are my top 10 tips for colouring your digital artwork. You're sitting here with your scanned in image on Photoshop and you want to turn it into a colourful masterpiece. Masterpiece not guaranteed. Okay so step number one guys you've got your scanned in image the first thing I like to do is separate the line art all of the black lines onto their own layer in Photoshop so that it's separate from all of the white. Now the way we go about doing this is have your layer selected over on the layers part on the right. I'm going to go up to the channels tab and then over onto this image where it says RGB red green and blue. I'm going to hover over the picture. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and then give it a click. What that does to the image now is it selected everything that's white. So we want to work with a line art. That means I'm going to go up to select here click on inverse so that we're now selecting the opposite, everything that's black. Now we're going to go back to the layers tab on the right, I'm going to go to layer, new layer and then we're going to call this one maybe just lines, that will do the trick. And then now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got some nice dark black ink going on in my selection tool. I'm going to make sure I've got the paint bucket tool selected as just black only and I'm just going to give it a tap anywhere in that image. And what that's done is on this new layer it's put only the black lines in and filled that all in with black. So if I go ahead and I just turn off the view on the original layer and even turn off the background you can see what I'm talking about. Now all of a sudden we've got just the lines doing their own thing completely separate to everything else and that makes working with it really nice and easy. Okay so let's turn that background back on and I'm probably going to fill that in as being a fairly neutral grey. The reason why we do this is so that the brightness levels of the other colours we work with um, don't appear to be too dark when they're against some white and also because it's just easier on your eyes in general. And that takes us to step number two, blocking out the colour areas of our character. This is like the groundwork we put in before we get cracking on with the artwork. We pick a new layer for every separate piece of a character and we get a colour block going in for that particular zone. Now I'm going to start off by going layer new and because it's going to work in order of the way things are covered we're going to start with the skin layer because that's the furthermost behind layer then on top of it is probably the bra, on top of that the hair, on top of that the hat, on top of that the jacket. But layer one is going to be skin. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a gradient tool for this. I like to use the kind of spotlight gradient and we're going to pick two different skin tones. 
You can block this out with just one skin tone, but by going for two, you automatically give your character a bit more bump and uh, color and tonal variation that slowly bleeds through towards your final piece. Now in my color selection tool here box, you will see that I'm gonna keep my color selections in this kind of middle third zone. I'm not gonna go too far too over to the right where things are really saturated um, because that's actually going to make the piece look really messed up too far down the line. We're gonna stick things down here. I'm gonna select a fairly light skin tone firstly. So I'm gonna go probably right up towards the white balance somewhere about here. And then if I select the secondary color in the gradient tool, I'm gonna drop things down to a slightly more reddish tone and my next skin color is going to be a lot kind of darker like so. You can see these two here. I'm going to go ahead on my skin layer and I'm just going to take the selection tool and I'm going to keep it lightest around about the boobs in the middle of the chest where the light's probably going to come down and hit really easily and it's going to be darker everywhere else. Oh, let's invert that selection really quickly and try that again. Perfect, something like that. If I just make it a bit of a smoother tone gradient like so, excellent. Now that's going to be our base. So what I'm going to do is go back up to the line layer that we've got and I'm going to select the outside of the image. Because the lines are now on their own layer, that makes things really good for us because I'm just going to hold down shift, select everything that's not this character. So maybe there's a bit of zone in there and then just a touch inside of that hair there. Perfect. I'm going to go back to that skin layer and I'm going to select delete. So all of a sudden, only the character area now is on the skin. It means we've got this base layer that we can block things to. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing for all of the other layers on top. So I'm gonna to have tones in yellow for the jacket, red for the bra and so on, and different colors for the cap. I'm gonna quickly zip through that because you know what I'm up to, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, so there we have it after we've basically put in the homework and got these different layers in place. If I turn them all off really quickly, and then we'll have a quick run through, we've got our skin layer, which is mapped out all of the parts of the character, which are gonna have any color applied skin at the bottom. And then we've got the hair that sits on top, the cap sits on top of that, the details of the cap sit on top yet again, then the bikini, then the jacket, then the zips and bits, and then the kind of details and go faster stripes of the coat, and the jeans just poking in a little bit of the bottom down here as well. So because we've got all of these different layers on, we can work on different areas of the character and the different paintwork isn't gonna bleed through into areas that it shouldn't. And it makes things far more malleable and reworkable in the future as well. So get your different layers out the way and that takes us on to step number three. So this is less of a um, quick tip and basically um, just an overview that we go straight into drawing for flesh or coloring the skin tones and how I like to kind of go about things. So first things first, we've got our skin layer down here. I'm going to make sure that we put a new layer in on top and basically whatever happens in this layer, I only want it to take effect on top of the skin part of this character. So I'm gonna right click this layer whilst it's above the skin, select create clipping mask, and now you'll see that it's locked to the layer below. And that basically means if I grab a pencil tool up here, no matter on this layer where I draw, I'm having no effect unless I'm going over the skin. And then if I go off the skin, no effect, but there we come back. Basically it gets the point across, whatever we do is just on the skin mapped zone. It's very useful stuff. So I'm gonna go in and use a brush tool, which is about this big, very soft, so zero hardness. The size is fairly large. I've got the pressure bits off for the size of the nib, so it's always gonna be a big, soft, round circle. And I've dropped the opacity to around about 15%, will probably do for the moment. I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool, or hold Alt, to select a really light part of the skin. And on this new layer, where all of our skin detailing will go. I'm not going super detailed yet. I'm just softly brushing in other zones of lighter area where the light should be falling on this character. So this shoulder is probably gonna be in a bit more light up here. 
uh, the cheeks zone of this character going to be a bit lighter around about here obviously we're going to drop all sorts of bit back into dark highlights as well and then if I just come down here a bit maybe that part of the boob needs to be a little bit lighter and then probably a couple strips of area on the abdominal wall down here again really loose really light the hips are probably going to be catching a fair bit of light the hips do not lie up and a down and around here and that way I've just kind of overall lightened the skin tone of this character and mapped that up. And now we're going to go in and we're going to start to work into the darker areas. So what I can do is just select a darker patch of skin that we've got here. And I'm going to just actually get myself a darker zone altogether. So I'm going to go from this point here, bring it down to around about here, a very kind of dark brown area. And then I'm going to just drop down the sides of the brush, still keeping it soft. And I'm just going to very loosely just to kind of lightly airbrush in a few shadow zones to start off with. Again, really low opacity, barely anything going on, just cutting around the edge of things, up along the edges of lines where the skin's gonna just depress in a little bit. Free scroll in just a touch. And I'm just very loosely defining what are gonna be some darker areas. Bearing in mind, we've got a light source which is coming vaguely from above. And what we do is we use a mixture of uh, lighter and uh, wait I should say softer and harder brushes to get all of this sort of thing done and it never hurts to kind of start off light and then build in the layers as you go along so I'm kind of going around having a think about areas and shadow all up behind here for example where this hands covered behind the hair that's going to be much more dark and then this shoulder as well is probably in shadow because his hand is going back over the shoulder area so I'm going to keep throwing that back all up under the chin is a classic that's going to be loads of shadow a very dark area I'm letting it fall out just a little bit lighter where it catches more light up and around here but because this hair is all over the place around here I am just going to throw a few kind of various shapes into shadow as well just to show that this has all got mass and it's covering things same is going to be up here where the cap is probably um, dropping some shadow right around the place probably right down here in fact so I'm going to just start to throw all of that back and this is kind of what you do you explore around the piece a little bit deciding what's where what's going to kind of get some shadow going on but again I'm just doing that at the moment with this really light kind of tone brush it's still not maximum shadow it's just loosely mapping out areas that we're going to throw into shade under here around here as such and so on okay so now what we're going to do is take that a little bit more seriously I'm going to drop my brush actually right up into some darker reds as you can see around here get that nice and dark like so and then with my brush I'm going to make it a little bit harder now and I'm going to turn on the pressure sensitivity and bits again so that the strokes start to have um, a bit more focus and direction for example if we go back up here, if I start to stroke in under these hairlines now, I'm going to throw a lot of that right back into shadow. A lot of this hair zone is really going to fall into place. I'm going to up the hardness just a little bit further on that brush so that these different strokes actually map a bit to the hair now. I can start to put the edges of this cheek line and jaw into shadow under here, like so. And again, just flick up and bring a few bits of these hair to cast shadow onto the face as well and really work my way around as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to do this sometimes using uh, harder lines like I am now with a slightly harder brush sometimes again going into a softer brush if I drop that all the way back down to throw some slightly vaguer areas into shadow like around about here and around about here if I just take that off over there so that it's a really just loose soft shape just identifying areas again, which will still be in shade regardless. Maybe I'd give the lips some plump and then go back into hard again by just upping that hardness on the brush just to get a few crisper lines. So I'm gonna drop in and do this all around the place. I'm gonna keep using various reds and purples and darker brown tones to throw in the shadows and then we'll come back for a little bit for highlights. Worth a really quick mention as well, why do we separate that line art layer if we go right to the top here because we get to do magical things like this i'm just going to slightly 
adjust the lips and mouth tone of this character. I can do so just like that, it's the easiest thing in the world. And I might make it just a little bit smaller, just ever so slightly. Keep that scale back on, put it there about so. Lovely, much happier as well. Just a little thing that you get to clean up when you separate out these layers. So don't worry about it looking a bit rough. We're gonna shadow up our shadow bits and I'll be right back. Okay guys, and so now here we are where I've blocked out all these different areas of shadow and light. I've gone in dark with reds and purples all up in particular zones and then separately gone in with some really light highlighted areas mixing up the flesh tones. Now that kind of gets step number three out of the way, working out what's going on with the colours on the flesh. But uh, what a lot of people can forget is step number four. And that is you have to throw in loads of reds again to give this character some life. So what I'm actually going to go and do is go right up here and get a nice pink tone of all things around about here. That's very nice. And still with this soft brush now, really light levels. I'm going to go in around the edges of a lot of these shadow areas and I'm just going to pink it out a bit. And if I just kind of work very lightly and just catch over some of those shaded areas where it meets back into the skin then what that does is it really just puts life back into the character when you get lots of shading and highlights down you run the risk of making your character uh, a little bit flat and a little bit dead looking a little bit gray if you get another pink layer back on top especially around these shadows what you're kind of basically saying is that there is blood pumping underneath the skin of this character this particular character is alive and that really just helps add some action back into things so just making my way around. Now you can use this as well as a bit of a tool to show where the shape of the boob meets the chest and then it hits a bit of a different angle. So I'm just highlighting just around the top of that curve there. I'm just going to do the same thing around the top of this curve here, just like so, a bit of chest blush so to speak. And that just helps you understand what's going on with those shapes. A bit more pink down there. And then if we go up here, we're going to swipe a load right across the cheeks. We'll come back to blush a little bit later, but we're going to get some in early right now. Bit of pink, bit of pink, up and around the lips a little bit more as well. And then just a little bit more down the tummy area zone. So where the shadow line underneath the boobs is, I'm just going to pink that out ever so slightly. And then just up around these other zones, just kind of swiping it over and excellent we've got our pinks out the way that's a really quick tip to get done in that part of the section but it just puts a bit more life and flush back into what we're up to so step number five we're gonna work on the eyes and make the eyes kind of pop out and talk about what we're doing there now if i zoom right in as you can see from this scan it's a little bit messy and dirty where the line work or the detail of line work gets picked up so i'm going to set my brush to a uh, size 14 and or near enough and then make it maximum hardness get that pressure on take off the opacity tool so that it is going to be sheer black and i'm going to go back up to the line art layer and i'm just going to fill in a few of the areas around here on these lashes around this side i'm just going to make these zones a bit more solid and a little bit sharper really quickly and again because your line art's on that separate layer I'm just going to do a bit of cleanup now oddly enough the tutorial, uh, real-time tutorials I did on this video for uh, drawing this character, both in pencil and line art, I did that way before Inktober. And as a result of Inktober, my inking skills on paper have gone up a lot compared to what is this raggedy Ann mess if you really zoom in. But again, I'm just going to thicken out all of those bits, block it all off. And then what I can do is go into the eraser tool. Again, maximum hardness, really small uh, nib size, maximum opacity and just kind of sharpen up a little bit of what's going on with these lines around the face. Just pick up these lashes and these uh, divots under the eyelid zone. Just trim some of that back so that we're not working with quite such messy dirty lines. And the reason why I'm going to bother doing that around the eyes where I might not be bothered too much about the rest of the character is that there's another trick later which affects the line art that I'm going to be doing and also, oh fireworks in the background, also, because the eyes have a lot of pop, 
they get a lot of attention from the viewer that's often where people look so if you can clean that up just a little bit it's probably worth doing I'm not going to do loads but we're just going to take the edge off the situation like that good and then over on this side as well really similar I'm just going to start to crisp up a little bit of what's going on around here those lines there especially the flick of the eyelash here and then here as well get rid of that altogether smooth out that line a little bit and let that curve just disappear up there excellent excellent flick that a bit of a point lovely and we've kind of just trimmed up that situation there this eyelash about there it's going to smooth off and then I'm going to drop back into the pen and just get a few more bits like that just to really get that shape and flick going the way that I want it to be in control of your own image at all times okay good so anyway like I was going on let's just hmm. these pupils are going to be nice and dark but I can't quite remember I've done a second pupil on the inside as if these might be spots of light perhaps for later I'm going to leave them in for the moment because I'm curious as to how that's going to look but in terms of getting the eyes sorted I'm actually still going to firstly sit down on that skin layer and get the whites in and we're not going to work perfectly white the trick is actually to go to the skin tone that's below it or surrounding the eye and make a slightly whiter version but not perfectly white version of that so I could go pure white up here but I'm actually going to sit back down somewhere around here to start off with. Going to make sure that brush is relatively large and soft to work with. Drop the opacity again and just get the white to play in around about here to the point that it's going to be brightest in the middle and still a little bit darker towards the top and towards the bottom. Just really roughly using that as well to zone in where the shape of this eye is going to be. That way again it just shows that the eye itself is a bit of a shape in its own right with darker and lighter areas. Some being bits hooded in shadow from the lid of the eye, some being shadowed just along the bottom from the shape or the curved nature of the eyeball itself. So again, getting those zones in like so really helps to pick it out. And Cindy's eyes I think are like a kind of green. Now I do have a reference picture on another layer that never hurts so if I just go up here and have a quick look hmm yeah they're kind of like olives we'll probably make it a nicer green than that let's get rid of that but that's kind of roughly what we're going to be working towards so this is going to be on a new layer as well and that's going to be uh, the iris and pupil areas that we're going to be working with so I'm going to use the selection tool again just to make sure that we're only playing around specifically in the eye. I'm just going to make sure that I've got all these areas selected together. So I'm just going to come all the way around. Now my lasso tool is a real bugger. I'm not going to lie. It keeps deciding that it's finished for selection when I'm halfway through. So I keep having to add selections together. You son of a gun. Let's get that in round here. There you go. And in round here as well please. Up and along. Okay, just like so. So what I do for the eyes and the way that I make the eyes pop in color is twofold. We start from dark and we work to light. Dark at the top, light at the bottom. If I'm gonna work in greens, before this kind of main olivey tone that's somewhere down here, I'm actually gonna go super dark right down here to begin. And I'm gonna just go ahead and fill these two zones with that really dark green. Then I'm going to work up from that, kind of towards this lighter olive, by again using a really soft brush, no hardness at all, fairly large like that. Turn off the pressure, leave on the opacity, but drop the opacity really low. And I'm just going to smoothly work in a few lines along the bottom area of the eye, slowly bring that up into the light. Same on this side, just tapping away building those layers up slowly and smoothly because we're going to get this smooth light zone going on and then we're going to really jump up the opacity. I'm going to drop back dark again a quick minute right down into a real dark deep green just to swipe over the top a little bit like so 
into the top and in slightly over to the right as well because the right and back of the curved area of the color of the eyes is going to just help pronounce the other area that's shifting forward and where we've got this kind of olivey green color that we're slowly working in down here now we're going to jump up the opacity situation instead of keeping in this kind of middle third zone i'm going to go right up here all of a sudden and start to give a real sense of glow to the eyes because it's really saturated this green that i'm putting in right down here and that really helps things kind of pop and stand out a bit so i'm just going to give that another run i'm going to pop in a really luminescent bit with a much smaller brush size just as a flick that kind of comes in here and again there and then also just around this side right in that edge there and right in there and then the actual pupils themselves we're going to drop right back into pretty much black so I'm just going to make that a harder brush stroke with an edge with a high opacity somewhere up here and just get some blacks back into that situation just back up there just back up there and we've got that dark pupil sitting back on top of everything and if I come off of that layer and just go back to the skin layer that's sitting just below it where we've got the eyes I'm going to max out a bit of a white to show where we've got these kind of white areas of light on the pupil now normally I do that completely separately and we will come back to that as its own separate layer but because I've bothered to draw them in on the line art layer in this example because we're doing separate tutorials all about just line art only it's worth just filling them in a little bit there just to help understand that there's that pop so we're going to come back away from the eyes now and they stand out quite nicely we will be coming back and putting all sorts of glassy effects on top and what i'm going to do now is just do a little bit more shading really simply and highlights around the jacket and the hair as well and we'll come back for the next step Okay guys, so using those steps we've got most of our character now in place. I've gone around and just put some basic uh, shading and highlights for areas around the clothes, um, picking out areas around the hairline, just dropping a few bits into shadow. It doesn't really need to um, be something where you go maximum detail all the time and stress out too much because you can just kind of pick and choose different areas, uh, remembering that overall it just needs to work as a piece as opposed to any one detail being perfect. So a few things that I'm going to do now that I've got all of these colours in is um, firstly just have a really quick play about the skin tones. I've got my skin layer here. I am going to make Cindy a little bit lighter and whiter. So I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to go to levels and I'm just going to drop up the overall white tones to everything and where that threshold is by taking the slider here on the right and just dragging it across. All of a sudden her skin gets brighter, there's a glow to things, and that really helps everything pop out, which is quite nice. If I did that in the other direction, the shadows area would become even darker, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to give that an okay, just to lighten up that flesh overall. Now that creates a nice glow to things, which is great and perfect timing for the next tip. So tip number six is add a color burn layer. Now, this basically is the thing that takes kind of fairly flat looking art like this and really gives it a pop and a nice shine. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to the line art layer that I've got here and I'm going to duplicate it firstly. So right click. Oh, there we go. Duplicate layer. Lines copy. And this lines copy line, I'm actually going to then filter and blur it. So up in filter, I'm going to go to lens blur. That's quite blurry already, as you can see on here. We've got like a high lens radius that really just fuzzes things out. So I'm going to click OK, let it do that. And boom, now we've added this extra really fuzzy version of the line art. Now, instead of leaving that on black and white, I'm going to take this layer as well that I've now blurred and I'm going to turn it into a color burn layer. And all of a sudden now what that does is it really works against the existing tones of the character. We're then going to drop the opacity to around about half just so that it's not looking too crazy and you can see now it's really given some extra life and push to the character like it's ever so slightly um, got a glass layer on top so really quickly this is with uh, no color burn layer at all 
maximum color blend layer but if we go back to no and then up to halfway that's where things really kind of work out quite nicely and it means our line art layer i'm going to just drop by about five seven percent something like that just take that down ever so lightly as well so that's one of the main things that's my favorite trick is putting on that color burn layer it really just gives this different type of pop and shine to the character and that takes us over to tip number seven and that is texture so what you might um, see sometimes is that uh, you can add a layer and use it as a texture from an existing image to really help create well, feelings of contrasting materials in the picture. I definitely recommend that you give this a go, but I definitely recommend you don't overdo it either. So what I like to do is add maybe one layer of texture on top of things for a character. Now I'm gonna go back down here, and what I've done is I've searched on Google separately for some, you know, non-copyrighted um, pictures of just texture and material. So I'm gonna just drag one straight across, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's this, it's just a big picture of some weave or something like that. It's on a layer, so it's behind some stuff in front of others. I'm gonna just bring it up to here so that it sits. In fact, I'll show you right on top, just so that it's nice and clear. I'm gonna bring it up to here, and then I'm just going to duplicate this layer so that I can move the duplicated version to cover most of the image, just so that it's gonna cover both parts of the jacket. And then I'm gonna merge these two layers together so it's one thing, just like that. And I'm gonna bring this layer down and I'm gonna lock it into that jacket layer down here. So I'm gonna go just above the jacket layer and then all of a sudden it sits right there. I'm gonna put it just, love, just above the highlights as well. And you can see this material has turned her top into a kind of gray cardigan or something like that. However, we're gonna play around with these layer properties to change the effect that it has. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit and this layer property, I'm going to go from normal and I'm going to turn it into maybe a multiply. That kind of gets things quite dark. And if we lower the opacity, it kind of puts a bit of a texture on things. And I think that's OK. It does bring down the color tone of the jacket, which is kind of all right. The character does have a, a kind of a darker workman's jacket, but it's not quite the right feeling. So I'm going to go from multiply whilst that opacity is halfway. I'm going to also try a color burn. That's quite good just gonna zoom out a little bit it's not too bad it makes it very banana -y, doesn't it and I'm just gonna try something else let's go for like a overlay like a hard light that's not too bad that way it's less saturated and what I'm doing is really just playing around and this is what you should do as well just have a go with all of these different layers and see what they get up to I reckon there's something else in here though like a vivid light better here we go because then it starts to only highlight the areas that cut across into the shadow the darker areas so it really shows that it's got that texture but it doesn't completely dominate the picture and I'm just going to now play around with the opacity do I want more mm, not too much I'm going to go for a little bit less but again it puts that texture on top just enough so that your brain's aware that this jacket now is made out of something a little bit different to the rest of the image. Just putting in a hint of that texture really helps to kind of just change up part of what's going on. So that's quite nice as well. We've got that out of the way. One thing I am going to do very quickly as well uh, is just a general thing. It's not really a tip. Is I am just going to make mix up this background a bit into something that's a bit more complementary as a color, um, but not too saturated at all. So let's go for some really kind of gray blue spectrum stuff. I'm going to drop this on as a gradient just over the background layer. Wrong way. Let's try it up this way around. Excellent. And that just helps kind of put this character in a bit more of a setting and a bit more of a better light spectrum as well. So I do quite like that. We can always put a texture in the background as well if you ever want to make her really stand out. That depends what you want your background to be. But by changing up this color tone to something complementary, which is basically colors that sit at the other end of the color wheel, look it up sometime, um, it just helps us kind of get a better feel for the overall elements of the character. And no one likes gray too much in the background. So what is our next tip beyond this? That is secondary light source. So wait, what number are we on to? <laughs> tip number eight, excellent. So what we do for a secondary light source is basically show that as well as the overall light that might come in from the top, 
cast the shadows of the cap and mean that the underside of the boob is where it's darker and so on, is just show that light's reflecting off all sorts of things and making other areas brighter. We've already got that ever so slightly on this bikini line here. You can see it gets a little bit lighter again. And I'm gonna do that by going over to these blues. And I'm gonna go right up to the white end of the spectrum on this. I'm not gonna leave it too blue at all. It's slightly blue in here, but mostly white. And I'm gonna put a new layer that's just underneath our line layer that we've been adding in as well and our extra blurry color burn line as well. So let's go layer, new. And I'm gonna just call this second for second light source and we're going to just zoom right in and i'm going to show you what i'm doing maybe on the boobs firstly and then the rest i'll put into time lapse but i'm going to take the brush and i'm going to make sure that it's got a little bit of hardness to it a little bit of definition to the edge i'm going to drop the size down ever so slightly and make sure that's some low opacity and pressure sensitive and i'm going to go in and imagine that Light is reflecting up off of the floor, maybe this eventually will be like a beach scene or something. Uh, and it adds a lot of brightness to just the edges of area that might have otherwise been in shadow. So I can suddenly start to do a load of light strokes here, but just make that boob suddenly look like much more of a three dimensional surface, but is catching the light that's reflected off other things. And all of a sudden that really helps to give it again its own pop and give the character much more of a vivid and stronger look so i'm just going off around here like so and again i'm just building up these strokes so the under edge is highlighted the uh, cross section of this bikini material is of course catching whatever light source it is that we're describing so i'm going to get a line across there the under edge for boob here be fairly saturated in that light. You'll notice for this secondary light source, I'm not using a highly saturated color at all. I'm keeping it as close to white as I can whilst giving it a little bit of tone that matches the background. Uh, so we're going with a really super light blue. So you can imagine a really sunny day where the light just bounces back up off the sand or something like that, or in a swimming pool. And I'm making sure that it's kind of almost gray. It's kind of uh, desaturated to the point where as well as being white, it's kind of almost got a darkness to it. I hope that kind of makes sense, but you don't want to go too bright at that second light source unless you're using purely just white, in which case you can go in quite hard, but it gives you a different type of image if you do that. So again, I'm just going to bring that up around parts of the boob which are tucked in to where the bikini cuts into the flesh as well. So a little bit there, oddly enough. And then a little bit just up in here. A bit of light will make its way through. And also along this curve here. It's going to catch a bit there. And just show the shape of this bikini in a way it's pulling over the flesh of the material. We're highlighting separately a stroke up here. A bit up there. Also in a really similar vein. A bit up here. Like so. So I hope you can see what's going on there and what it does. Again, just gonna drop into a little bit of time lapse and make that happen to um, other parts of the body as well. And I'll see you right at the end for the next step. Okay, so you can see that what that's done is really just helped give this character and again, this image a lot more pop. And that's what we're kind of doing with these different layers, adding something that makes it more believable to the eye at each stage. So now we've got that out of the way, I might just have a little play around of a texture on the background just to kind of give it a bit more color. I'm not sure if that's gonna be what we're gonna stick with, but I am gonna take that background and I am going to just saturate that a little bit more. I want to give that a bit more color. So we go to hue saturation. I'm just nudging that up. Yeah, just so those tones really kind of pop a bit more. I do quite like that. We're going to leave that in place. And that really has more value now, I think, um, overall against this image. Now that we've got these other highlights in play. Let's just double check this other layer I'm kind of playing with. Nah, we'll get rid of that. So now that we've got most of those steps down, I'm going to take us along to step number nine of my top 10 things you need to do to kind of really make your coloring digitally pop out. And this is now our white light reflective layer. So we've done a secondary light source, that's great. It feels really three dimensional and real. Now we're going to put a white light source on top of everything. 
So again, I'm going to stay just below the black lines layer, but above the secondary light source. So that means layer, new layer. We're going to just call this one white, just so I know what it is. And exactly as it says on the tin, I'm going to go to absolute white. And we're going to just start to map out various abstract reflections of the light on this character. And there are two main ways to go about this. Now, one of them is to, oh, you know what? I've just realized actually, really, really quickly, back to that skin tone, let's give her a bit of blush. Let's quickly go over to some pink. As we've done the different things with the different layers and the different levels, uh, some of it's come away a little bit. Some of it kind of gets lost in the process, but I want a bit of pink blush all on here, all up on this nose, all around here. Lovely, there we go. That makes me much happier. Just a bit more around the boobs as well. And again, this is kind of a thing you can do as you get your layering back in and just kind of rework over a few spots. Well, I've made it just a little bit too pink over that boob. So I'm just going to cut back a little bit, cut back once more, better, over on there. Lovely, that's just a bit I wanted to do. Anyway, back to what I was talking about, sidetracking, the white light layer. So if we go up to maximum whiteness and we're going to zoom in and the first thing are spotlights. So these are spots of area that catch a bit of light on the character. And a way that I like to do this is absolute soft brush. Um, and depending on sort of what size and where you're working, I'm going to go fairly large for this, relatively um, okay opacity, about 25%. And I'm going to create an area that's a spot of white light, a really fuzzy spot just like that. And maybe another one's going to be over here. And maybe separately, I'm going to do a bit that's for the nose, just how it catches a bit of a light up here. And then what we do is we come back and on these spots, I go and increase the hardness quite a bit and use a slightly smaller size to then actually create a dot of white light that sits right on top of that. So dots over very fuzzy spots like this and like that. And it creates where there's definitely a reflection of light, but the softer bit shows that it's kind of matted slightly uh, into the tones of the skin. Now I'm just gonna get a stroke up for the nose about there. I'm just gonna create a little spot or two for the lips, which would be nice and shiny about here, just like that. And then over the eyes, we can do something a little bit differently. I'm going to actually use the selection shape tool for some ellipses. And I'm going to go right in and I'm just going to paint bucket in pure white straight into that ellipse, just like so. This one, oh, we're going to bring this above the line art layer. There we go, even better. So I'll just get that ellipse to go over here as well. And I'm just going to paint bucket that in. And you can continue to do this with um, other dots or strokes or abstract shapes. I'm going to go maximum hardness all of a sudden on this brush. I'm going to stick up that opacity. And wherever I see fit on the eyes, I'm just going to put in a few other bits. Let's get rid of that selection tool and just drop over the eyes. Highlight point here. Let's get this highlight point back in because our color burn layers just drop that out a little bit. And I'm going to lighten up around here especially of this bit around here. Great. And then now I'm just going to, for example, just put in like a three dot situation. One, two, and three. And then again here, one, two, and three, just to again give loads of pop and light to the eyes. And I'm going to get a stripe of very white light on the eyeballs themselves just along here just to show what's going on. So that really just helps bring all of those eyes to life on the character. And again, bring parts of the area forward. And we're gonna kind of continue this vibe. So I'm gonna go back down here and I'm gonna go and get that soft brush happening with something soft here and there. And then I'm gonna drop that into a hard brush and a small size to actually put dots of lights inside of that zone. That's how we kind of like to get the reflection on the skin. And then I'm going to do that over here as a two-step to get a particular white zone around about here that's just going to kind of uh, come away quite nicely. Let's drop the opacity a little bit so we can work a bit smoother. But it's a bit like that and then a bit here. So it's a one, two. And then again, we're just going to go and make that smaller and harder, ladies, and bring that up 
to a strong dot here. Just tapping that in and then stronger kind of shape that's in there as well. And that's how we get these nice white spots. Now we are going to do the same on the boobs but there's the second way that I wanted to talk about and that's creating a very particular zone of reflected light and the reason why we do this sometimes is because it's a very good way of mapping out the shape of a curved surface i.e. the boob. So I'm going to go in with the uh, selection tool and I'm going to bring it along here and I'm going to hook it out a bit and then along and I'm going to create a curve that represents the surface of the skin there. I'm going to bing bring that back around and just kind of curve it in to show that it tucks in a little bit as it meets the material and then now I'm going to use the selection tool for a really soft very large brush with relatively low opacity about halfway in and then just use that to fill in that area just like so. If I get rid of that selection then all of a sudden I've got this kind of curve of light that disappears off a little bit onto the skin texture and I'm going to do a really similar thing just up here as well for the inside of the boob. So it's going to just come up and then it's actually going to curve around quite nicely. In fact, no, that curve doesn't quite work. We'll go a little bit further in. So down here, up, much better. Then we're going to curve around, map a bit to the surface of this boob like so. I'm just going to create this little zone of light which will meet exactly this. We'll curve back in as it meets in there and again let's get our brush tool very lightly just fill that in and work that back up so back up there and I'm going to highlight it round about the middle instead of all the way in get rid of that selection area and again we've got that nice band of light so in a really similar way I'm just going to wrap up by putting a few bands and a few spots of light on a few more key areas and then we'll be down to our last step Okay, great guys. So we've got all of the various layers of light going on as well to again help describe that all of these surfaces are different shapes by reflecting different things off of them, different imaginary light sources and stuff. And that really takes us just to the last point. I've played around again a little bit more with the colour levels and the last thing for me to kind of finish off the picture in terms of the basic top 10 things that I like to do is going to be a bit of blur and a bit of shadow. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this image now that I'm fairly happy with how it looks for something relatively quick and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to probably flatten visible. So I'm going to right click my layers and I'm going to go down to flatten image, discard hidden layers, OK. And then now that I've got this background layer, I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing. So let's zoom out, get our selection tool. And I'm going to control C that. And I'm then actually going to go uh, to edit, step backwards, edit, step backwards. So that I've still got all of my different layers. Um, but now if I go to the very top of this image, I can paste the flat version on top. So at the very top layer here, we've got the whole image all as one thing. Now the reason why I've done that is because now I'm going to go to the uh, lines layer that I've got back down here, turn that back on and I'm going to again select the outside edge of this image, all of the bits which aren't the actual character themselves and that little bit in that hair. I'm going to go up to the top image and I'm going to just delete all of that out from this top particular image layer. Now I'm going to duplicate that image again because I'm going to use it for a number of separate things and turn one of them off. So on this one here, here's our very top image. I'm going to go to filter and again I'm going to pop in a load of lens blur to this. So let's go straight in like so. That is quite blurry. So I'm going to drop that down ever so slightly just to make ever so slightly less of a blur on here because by putting some of the parts of this image out of focus it's going to help really give it some depth and pull. There's nothing too crazy close to us for viewer and too crazy far away in terms of 3D depth perception. But by adding a blur on here, I'm now going to get the eraser tool and I'm going to create a fairly large size which has a very soft described edge. That looks good. I'm going to make its opacity ooh, about one third of the way. And now I'm going to delete away this blurry area 
um, to create all of that stuff back in zone. So I'm just going to show that the eyes are all in focus, the edges of the hair around here are perfectly in focus, all up around here where the arm is. The front of that cap's coming towards us a bit. I might leave the very tip of it ever so slightly blurry. Top of the cap's in focus, it's part of that visual range for me. Uh, this part of the arm's fine, but as this elbow gets a bit closer, I might let that stay a little bit out of focus as well. All of the shoulder area all around here, I'm fine with that being in focus as well. This is all great. Uh, the boobs are all going to be in focus, obviously. So let's go ahead and delete around there. And you can see what I'm doing. You can see it's starting to create pull on different parts of the image that weren't really there before. So I can bring parts of that sleeve back into focus. Maybe parts of the tummy. Maybe not all of the hips anymore down this side. Let's make sure there's nice and crisp lines right across the chest, however. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And still got a very soft brush and I'm just going to lower that opacity right down now and just work out some of the finer details again. Just basically deleting most but not all of that blurry layer just to really give some depth to the image again. A little bit back there. I'm going to pull some of this back into focus. Let's just keep deleting away and up here but I will still let the edge of this shoulder be out of focus, edge of the elbow I should say, be out of focus a little bit there. Pull that back and then with a really low opacity brush I'm still removing most of the blurred part here but definitely not all of it. And so now all of a sudden that character again has these different focus elements as well that still pull you uh, visually in as well on the eye. So that's great, we've got most of all of the bits I wanted to worry about down. The very last part for me is again, I'm just going to uh, select that other layer that we had. And again, I'm just selecting the outside edge. Just like, oh, let's try that again. I think I've selected too much. Just going to select the outside edge using the magic wand. So that's here, here, there, and just in there. Much better. And then on a new layer again, I'm going to invert that selection so if it's the same size as Cindy the character and I'm going to create a shadow layer and that's going to be a multiply so I'm just going to pop in a light to dark grey spectrum on there let's go dark to medium dark and again I'm just going to use a gradient tool to map that like so Ugh, disgusting but it gets the point across let's put it underneath that Cindy layer instead and then I'm just going to move that across. Actually, I'm going to put it right at the top so I can see it. And then I'm just going to move it somewhere over here, like so. I'm going to drop it back down behind the character layer there. And firstly, I'm going to set it to multiply, just so it creates a darker shadow layer of our character, something like so. Just to show that she's standing, you know, near against something and it gives her again that further element of pop and dimension. I have to make sure the shadow's going off to the bottom left direction because it kind of matches with the shadow area that I've got on the cap. Again, brings it up quite nicely. I am going to completely deform the area right around here just to make it look like it kind of matches up a little bit more with the arm as well. So we're going to do that by just transforming it. Uh, can I do some skewing? Will that do the trick? A little bit. And let's bring that up there. And up there excellent just like so and then that whole area of shadow as well again I'm gonna run it through one last filter again just a bit of blur this is another lens blur one but we're really dropping it down this time as well we're not going to be too crazy at all so let's drop that blade curvature and let's drop that radius of that lens and then okay and again it will just have another little think as it puts that into place let's see how that goes boom well everybody there we have it if we start from the original image just black and white those are my main 10 key steps that i like to do my 10 main 
kind of things I keep in my mind when I'm putting sort of a colour onto any character to help really make it pop and stand out. So thanks a lot for watching guys, I really hope you found this video to be of some sort of help when it comes to my top 10 tips for colouring in your digital artwork. I really wanted to put together something that was going to be a little bit longer so that you guys could follow along in real time and maybe have a go of your own artwork whilst I did mine, but also a little bit collapsed at the same time so that it didn't end up lasting about 6 hours into the evening. So if you're not subscribed to the channel then why not click that button and follow along for more tutorials in the future and for those of you in the know of course I love making these free videos on YouTube because art is very close to my heart and I want it to be easily accessible to all of you guys as well. But if you ever want to help me out don't forget you can come click on my Patreon page where all of your support is the main thing that makes all of this possible and of course there's all sorts of perks and artwork rewards as well. And so an extra great big thank you to the patrons Jamie me, Nikolai HH, Ray C, The Clamps, Joe R, Ryder2KX, Michael S, Trent H, Adam D, Wes B, Steve R, Julio Felix O, Taylor S, Furry Friend, Rory A, David W, Quay Joseph, Christian L, Gabriel R, Minion715, Icy Zagi, Adam T and Jeff G. You among others are absolute heroes, thanks as ever for the support. And before we go, let's talk about competitions. So first things first, the winner of the UG Graphics Drawing Tablet, the competition we did across Inktober. Thanks again everybody for following along and tagging me in your own artwork, that's absolutely awesome. But there could be only one winner, picked at random from the most active people on there, and that ended up being Torin Brutus. Sad. Congratulations good sir, I'll be posting out the tablet accordingly. So commiserations to the rest of you, but never fear we'll be doing more giveaways in the future as long as people keep sending me stuff to review. And as of this November, again I'm doing the Patreon giveaway for the Ace Pen AP2150 graphics drawing monitor as well. This bad boy is going to get posted out to one of you delicious patrons on Patreon, again just as a real great big thank you and something to hand back to you lot for all of the support. So if you want to be in with a chance at winning that all you have to do is join on Patreon and support me there. Doesn't matter what tier it is, I'm keeping this competition open to everybody and because there's a relatively small number of people on my Patreon account, I do like to think that your chances are probably quite high. Okay guys, I've rambled on enough, all of the links are in the description below. Thanks a lot again for following along, give this video a like, you guys are the best and I'll see you next time. Take care.